This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. 15-year-old crash victim in dire need of blood. Lasana Turner Francis, the stepmother of Mount Bay High School student Michael Jackson, has issued a desperate plea for blood donations to help save the 15-year-old who has been in intensive care at the Kingston Public Hospital since March 5. Jackson was one of four people traveling in a private motor vehicle on the Trinityville Main Road in St. Thomas when the car slammed into a utility pole at approximately 3 p.m. The occupants were taken to the hospital, where three of them were treated and released. Jackson, though, was in an unresponsive state and was admitted. The teen had been staying with relatives in Trinityville and went to Maranta Bay to pick up money to purchase back-to-school supplies. While returning to Trinityville, the crash occurred. He is in need of blood. He is still in the intensive care unit on a machine. He is not breathing by himself. He has not yet done the major surgery to his pelvis, going down to his right leg. That is a surgery he is going to go into as soon as he is strong enough, and he is going to need a lot of blood for that as well. They are still doing tests. They did a CT scan. The doctors think they should do an MRI soon, Turner Francis told the news. She thanked Morante Bay High School for the help the family has received so far and the KPH for keeping Jackson alive to date. The family has been getting a lot of support from the school. They have been encouraging us and putting up people to make blood donations. They ensure that we have transportation and so forth. We had an hour of prayer at the school on Friday for him, where the students participated. The staff at the KPH have been doing very well, she said. Turner Francis also made an appeal to motorists. I am a motorist who always encourages other motorists to drive carefully, not just for themselves but for others. I encourage you to drive safely. Most of the time, accidents like these are not just the short-term injuries but long-term injuries that may not just affect your life but cause others to be affected because of your carelessness, she said. Jamaicans wishing to give blood may do so at a blood bank using the name Michael Jackson. Receipt showing proof of donation may be sent to Turner Francis, who can be reached at 876-574-1247. Monetary donations can be sent to National Commercial Bank, Morant Bay Branch, Account number 644-144-380 in the name Lasana Turner Francis. On Friday, the National Road Safety Unit renewed its call for road users to exercise caution as it reported that from January 1 this year to Friday, 88 people were killed in fatal crashes. In 2021, a total of 487 people perished in crashes, with males accounting for 87%. The unit has made a particular appeal to men to take heed. The unit said that it is not comforting as family members are losing breadwinners and homes while communities and the economy face severe consequences. Motorists are reminded to show patience and care when driving, overtaking or passing vehicles. It is imperative to be cautious, drive carefully and follow traffic rules, the unit said. Saint and resident returns a cop's lost a loaded gun. The hierarchy of the Saint Anne Police Division has heaped a praise on a resident who found and returned the lost firearm of a woman constable attached to the highway patrol unit. The constable lost the Glock pistol with 17 rounds in bushes along the land of Remain Road in Saint Anne late Saturday afternoon when she reportedly went to relieve herself. On discovering that the gun had disappeared, the cop and her colleagues unsuccessfully searched the area and later reported the matter to her superiors. Senior Superintendent Dwight Powell, the head of the St. Anne Police Division, said the resident who found the weapon took it to a justice of the peace and it was handed over to the police on Sunday. I am eternally grateful and I am proud to have these kinds of people working with in St. Anne, said Powell. In the meantime, the woman constable is now the subject of an internal investigation. Under Section 41A of the Firearms Act, a person who loses a firearm through negligence shall be guilty of an offense and on summarily conviction be liable to a fine not exceeding $100,000 
or to imprisonment with or without hard labor for not more than 12 months. Gun and drug trafficking among priority issues for new U.S. Ambassador Newly appointed American Ambassador to Jamaica, N. Nick Perry, has revealed that the long-standing issues of gun running and drug trafficking between the United States and Jamaica will be among his priorities when he takes up assignment in Kingston. Perry, a Jamaican-born American official, was last week approved by the U.S. Senate to replace Donald Tapia as a U.S. ambassador to Jamaica. He told the news on Sunday that as a top American official in Jamaica, he will work to strengthen the bond between Washington and Kingston. But Perry revealed that gun and narcotics trafficking will also be high on his agenda. The trafficking of guns and narcotics not only impact the economic well-being of Jamaica, but threatens the lives of Americans and is an issue that I am sure I will be briefed on and must be given high consideration, he said. In recent weeks, there have been two major gun busts in shipments coming from the U.S. Meanwhile, it could be another five weeks or so before Perry arrives in Jamaica. He must first resign his seat in the New York State Assembly, and he wants to ensure that his preferred candidate wins at the polls. Perry is the third highest-ranking person in the state legislature, having risen through various positions over the years. He is also now making arrangements related to the operations of his business before his arrival in Jamaica. Central Bank reports more success in detecting counterfeit notes. The Bank of Jamaica is reporting more success in the detection of counterfeit bank notes. In its recently tabled 2021 annual report, the central bank revealed that 571 counterfeit bank notes were detected during the year. In 2020, the authorities discovered 547 bank notes. Last week, Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark announced the introduction of new and upgraded currency notes. This is part of efforts to enhance the security of banknotes to reduce the risk of counterfeiting. Policewoman cleared of criminal charges A district constable who was charged in connection with a 2018 brawl involving four members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force was acquitted following the conclusion of her trial on Friday. Don Smichael was charged with three counts of unlawful wounding arising from the incident at the Old Harbor Police Station in St. Catherine. Attorney Vincent Willesley, who represented Ms. Michael, said his client went to the police station to inquire about the confiscation of her motor vehicle plates. There was an argument, and the district constable was reportedly hit by an inspector. Mrs. Michael retaliated and was restrained by four cops. She was later charged with unlawful wounding. However, at the end of the trial, the presiding judge ruled that Ms. Michael acted lawfully in defending herself. Codify rules for issuing gun license in law sees Stokes. Development economist Dr. Chris Stokes believes the prohibition on giving gun license to persons with criminal traces or past convictions should be outlined clearly in the law if there is a problem with cabinet ministers using their discretion to grant these persons license. Mr. Stokes, speaking with the news, noted that the law as it currently stands allows the National Security Minister that discretion. You can't then turn around and say somebody with the weight of having to make this decision ought not to have made it, he argued. He said the only issue should be whether the minister's decision was made in an arbitrary manner. In light of the current controversy relating to the exercise of that authority by holders of the office, he is urging that the rules be codified in law. Attorney Clive Monroe Jr. also cautioned against allowing emotions to frame the policy regarding the issuing of gun license to persons with their past convictions. He added that he was wary of the use of the term criminal traces, which is subjective. He is also concerned about how the issue of expunged convictions could be treated, noting that the nature of expungement is that record does not exist anymore. If it doesn't exist anymore, then it should not be held against the individual, he argued, adding that it goes against the very concept in law of rehabilitation of criminal offenders. 
Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.